We all know something about the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We know that Franz Joseph was its Kaiser, it liked to eat Balkan countries, and that it broke up after the First World War. It was a great power throughout its entire existence, and so one of the great questions surrounding it has often been, why didn't it have overseas territories like the other great powers? First of all, it did, just no large ones, and we'll get to that later, but as for why Austria-Hungary never had any major colonies, the reason is very simple. It couldn't. This was mostly down to a lack of capacity. The Austro-Hungarian navy wasn't very formidable, let alone capable of defending a vast colonial empire. Another reason was that for those at the top of the Austro-Hungarian government, they already had an empire. You see, the Habsburg monarchy had something the other great powers didn't room to expand next door because the Balkans were fair game. The Habsburg monarchy did join the rest of the great powers for the 1884 Berlin Conference. Here, the famous scramble for Africa was planned, which divided up the continent amongst the European powers. Austria-Hungary took no African colonies for itself during this, because again, it had its own problems. That's not to say that the Austro-Hungarians took zero interest in overseas activities, though. Many private citizens and businesses urged the government to build an overseas empire, the most notable being the Austro-Hungarian Colonial Society. Scientists, explorers and merchants from the Habsburg monarchy were very active in East Africa. It was proposed that the Austro-Hungarian Empire attempt to take these lands in in order to gain a port in the Indian Ocean, and also because empire. Austria-Hungary's motivations here were primarily economic, and again, this went nowhere. Mostly because it would be expensive, there was no guarantee it would succeed, and also other European powers were interested in the region. So, for the Austro-Hungarian Empire, imperialism was viewed almost entirely as an economic venture, and because it didn't have much money to spare, no real attempts were made. For example, there were talks to buy this territory from Spain, as well as conquer Morocco, but there was never really any benefit to doing so, nor much willpower to even try. Part of this came from the Hungarian half of the empire, who did not wish to spend money on something it felt would disproportionately benefit the Austrian half. Another factor in why Austria-Hungary didn't build a colonial empire is the man at the top, Emperor Franz Joseph. The emperor wanted nothing to do with colonialism in general and was much more concerned with keeping the empire together. The lack of progress on building an empire did in fact lead to many Austro-Hungarian explorers aiding other imperial powers. There was one exception, the Austro-Hungarian Empire did obtain what's called a concession in the Chinese city of Tianjin. This came after they, as part of the Eight Nation Alliance, helped to put down the Boxer Rebellion. A concession was basically a street, and this, in its entirety, represents the peak of the Austro-Hungarian overseas expansion. So to conclude, the reason why Austria-Hungary didn't build a colonial empire is a simple, if not anticlimactic one. It couldn't. If they had taken their explorer's advice and taken part in the scramble for Africa, their empire could have looked like this, but then again the dual monarchy was under great strain already. Perhaps it was prudent then that Franz Joseph not complicate things. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to all of these patrons you see on screen for their generosity in supporting the show, and a particularly special thanks to Party Boyko, Azarka Flash, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Thomas McGill, Gustav Swan, Winston Kaywood, Sky Chappelle, The Amusement Archives, Adam Harvey, and Raphael, Raphael, I'm not sure how that's pronounced.